Hi everyone and welcome back to New Egg TV. My name is Paul and once again we have a special guest from ASUS. This is JJ and JJ, thanks for stopping by today. Thanks for having me. Uh, what we're going to be talking about today is the Z77 platform, uh, the wealth of motherboards that ASUS has developed for the Z77 platform, but specifically we're going to talk about one of the features that ASUS has brought to bear with uh, with this launch, and that is Fan Expert. And I think we're on a we're on a new Fan Expert now. That's correct. This is Fan Expert Two. Fan Expert Two. So we have the sequel now, uh, and uh, there, there's a lot of cool things you can do with this. And it's designed for folks who are setting up their system, uh, who are taking their fans, plugging them into the motherboard, and uh, the types of controls that are available for the fans uh, to have power savings, to have good airflow in the case, and generally speaking, to keep the components cool while also maintaining silence overall. So, JJ, can you give us a walkthrough of what Fan Expert 2 is all about? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I, I will make a quick point. Like we noted originally in our overview video, this is a key technology that we have on pretty much the majority of all our Z77 SKUs. Um, so this is really one of the cool functions that we have. But as you noted, one of the really important aspects behind um, overall fan functionality is to be able to have controls over the actual headers on the board. So what we're going to be showing you with Fan Expert 2 is that essentially here in our setup, we've got six fans. Okay, so we have four chassis fans. These are actually three fan, uh, three pin fans as opposed to four pin fans. And that's an update in itself to the Fan Expert 2 hardware implementation. So chassis fan headers one through four now support both three pin and four pin fans. Um, while our CPU fans, which tend to be more premium oriented fans and have PWM technology, mm -hmm. um, these are four pin fans. So in total we have six. Now, generally on a more basic board um, or on competitors products, you might not have the functionality of actually being able to control each one of these fans. But for this generation, we've taken it past just offering you manual controls or presets, whether that's within the operating system or whether it's within the UEFI. This generation, we have full automatic fan calibration for each one of the headers. So it makes it very, very simple that if you just go ahead and connect everything, you're really, we're essentially going to be able to sense um, all the data that's important to the fan, and then it's going to allow you to go ahead and go into the software and make very easy customizations uh, so that you can go ahead and get relative acoustics, but also quality in terms of the performance. So is the idea here being that um you guys, from a design perspective, making the motherboard, you're not always sure what fans any particular user is going to be plugging into the motherboard. You might have, uh, you know, like you said, the four-pin fans for the CPU. You might, you might have a range of fans even that are plugged into the various headers on the board, positioned to different areas in the case. You're never quite sure, based on how the user sets up their system, which fan header is going to go to which position on the case. There, right. That's actually even a whole nother a ball of wax uh, that we've accounted for with a special new layout function that we have within the software that allow you to actually assign the location of the fan. Um, so that helps to resolve that issue, but you're 100% right. Um, even our preset data, we don't know what the fan is that's connected, so our approximate guess of, let's say, silent of 800 to 1,000 RPM, it's just that. It's a guess. And while it should generally be quiet, it would be preferred to, of course, know what the operating range of the fan is, and that's actually what this allows us to do. So let's go ahead and actually jump into the actual software. Okay. So here on uh, the actual desktop, um, you can see we're in the Fan Expert 2 interface, and we're going to go ahead and click on the auto-tuning button. Now, the auto-tuning button has gone ahead and, as you see, ramped all the fans to their maximum RPM value. And they're going to then, from here at this point, incrementally ramp it down to a lower RPM value. And so this information is being actually stored directly within the AI Suite 2 software within Fan Expert, and then also being sent to the Super I.O. controller. That's the part of the motherboard that actually controls all the fan functionality. Okay. okay? And as this uh, ramping process is occurring, we're slowly dropping down, dropping down, dropping down to eventually the minimum operating level of that fan. Now this is important because this preset data information that we have in terms of like silent or standard or turbo or even the full fan speed option needs to take all this calibrated data. But the great thing is that then that preset data is, becomes more accurate. So for point of example, silent, which previously might have actually had the fans be in a reduced level of operation and be quiet, should actually be silent at this point. We'll actually be able to turn off essentially the chassis fans because we know what true silent should be in terms of their minimum operating value. Okay, and very important in this step is being able to tell rotation speed because you might have some larger fans that have lower rotation speed, might have smaller fans that have higher rotation speed, and it's actually sensing with each plugged in fan what the max and minimum is for each one. Correct, and all this data actually will also be, uh, as we'll show within the uh, AI Suite 2 interface under Fan Expert 2, you can then look at it after the fact. So if you want to see what the minimum rotation may, uh, range is, the maximum, what the middle targets are, so that if you want to go ahead and make per adjustments 
uh, whether it's in a fixed mode or in a smart mode in terms of making like your own fan curve, all that data is going to be available to you. So it's really cool. Awesome. So Looks we can. Like it's finished. Yeah, it's almost finished up right here. Right now, it's pretty much just compiling uh, the last parts of the data. And in a little bit, it's going to go ahead and give us uh, the next prompt. And from there, we're going to go to the next step, uh, which is going to actually be to define the location of our fans. Now, uh, I, I notice on the, the software here, it's got a little layout of uh, a typical computer case. Uh, mm -hmm. So you have fan one, fan two, fan three, fan four. Uh, and then they've actually assigned them to the different positions throughout the case. And uh, can you actually go through and change those uh, using the software? Correct. And that's actually going to be right here in the next spot. So let's go ahead and click Next. And we can see here that we have a little bit of kind of like a topology map, right, of our chassis and where fans are normally going to be. So already kind of grayed out is going to be the CPU fan because uh, we've gone ahead and already designated that. Now here we see we have chassis fan one, chassis fan two, three, and then four, okay? But let's go ahead and say we didn't know where we had everything connected. So at this point, we could go ahead and click the search button and then start it. And what it'll do is it'll go ahead and actually just ramp just that fan. So we can see that that fan has actually gone ahead and ramped up. And visually or acoustically, we can kind of go, oh, that's where that's positioned. Now, in this type of, let's say, layout, we could go ahead and say effectively, oh, that's a front fan, right? So we can then go ahead and go to the location prompt here and then choose from different options, which for us, we're going to go ahead and select front fan. So and I, in a case, for example, where you have multiple front fans, can you uh, assign more than one to, to a single position? Correct, yeah. So if we go to, let's say, the second one, and we thought in positioning-wise that's also going to be our front fan, we could go in and set that one also as the front fan as well. And correspondingly, of course, you could do the same things for other fans as well, whether they're a, a side fan um, or whether it's a back fan or an intake fan or a bottom fan. So you can go ahead and assign all those. That's all entirely up to you in terms of setting up those configuration parameters. So at that point, we could now essentially be complete in terms of the first initial part, which is the automatic calibration process. Mm -hmm. Now from here, if let's say we want to go ahead and click full fan speed, all the fans now actually understand what their full maximum operating range is. But let's say on the entire other end of the spectrum, we could go ahead and go to silent, and silent is actually going to go down to their minimum operating value. So our CPU fans uh, that we have up here for our Corsair H60 are effectively still running. Uh, but at their lowest operating level to give us close to essentially silence. And from here, all these fans have effectively shut off because we don't need them running because we're now following the pre-calibrated uh, pre data. Now, uh, is there a user control for this? So, for example, if I want silent but I still want them to spin, can you uh, assign it to, for instance, go between turning off completely or just going to the minimum yeah. rotation speed? Well, even though we've selected a silent profile, this is still taking into effect all the temperature data that the board is being sent. Um, so right now, of course, if you were web browsing, there's no point for any of these fans to be running because there's nothing really within the system that's producing that much heat. Uh, it's predominantly just the CPU. Even the GPUs, they generally go into a 2D level of operation, so there's very little heat output. Mm -hmm. But as soon as you start to do more with the systems, this silent preset is still going to go ahead and ramp these fans as needed to go ahead and give you airflow. But if you then wanted more advanced level of control, you can actually go into the advanced interface. Okay. So from here, we then have actually multiple header assignments. So we have like, let's say, CPU fan or chassis fan one. So let's first go over to CPU fan. And I generally don't like actually just calling it CPU fan. I like to know what it is. Um, so one of the cool first parts that we want to show here is that we can actually change the fan name. So I can just go ahead and edit this and delete that. And I can actually call it what it is, which is a Corsair H60. And then that actually then real time, you see, shows up under my sensor information. So that new name now is it's much more contextual. And same thing, if I wanted to go ahead and recall these different names like this was be Antake Front Intake, I could call it that. And that's much more contextual for me to know that that's the RPM value in that location. So it makes it very easy to understand where I'm at. After you've gone through and uh, renamed all your fans so you know exactly which is which, would that overflow to, for instance, uh, other monitoring programs that you might have running on the computer? No, that's one of the specific advantages of actually our software is, is that we're all this is all self-contained. Um, and of course, with, let's say, a third-party program, it's not going to correctly understand the advanced controller that we have in here mm -hmm. unless they were natively right for it. So you want to stick with Definitely. Now, looking at some of the other functionalities you noted in terms of defining some characteristics, let's say we wanted to go to chassis fan one. 
we still have the actual option here under smart mode to fully assign the fan curve. So the fan curve is going to be, let's say, an adjustment based off a of temperature. So do you want it to ramp to a certain RPM level based on a certain temperature? And you, that's all adjustable. So I can go ahead and swing that out to here, bring that down to here, and make an adjustment to that if that's the way that I wanted the fan to respond. Mm -hmm. And even here, we have a speed up and speed down option which is really cool. This actually allows you to adjust the aggressiveness at how fast it ramps from one RPM state to the next RPM state. And what that really means is it's kind of like that swooshing sound in terms of when the fan revs up from, a, let's say, 300 RPM all the way up to like 1500 RPM. So you can actually adjust that range so it's much, let's say, smoother in tone as opposed to being much more whiny in tone. So it's not going to give you that burst of, you know, fan speed up noise that you get, it'll actually sort of slowly speed up the fan. And Correct. But that's up to you because, of course, aggressively ramping it gives you the best absolute cooling performance, but it might not give you that acoustics yeah. that you want in terms of your system, right? Um, but we also have some other cool options in here as well, where let's say if maybe we went to like chassis fan 4, which maybe would be our intake fans for some purpose, we could go ahead and do a fixed mode of RPM, and we can see that that fan, as soon as I went there under the RPM fixed mode, we can see a real-time adjustment value of it. So let's say we always want to run that fan at 1500 RPM because it's an intake. Mm -hmm. So we want to control a certain amount of pressure being introduced into the chassis. Same thing, I could go to chassis fan 3 and do the same thing and lock that into 1500, but let's say have the other two fa chassis fan headers have their own smart mode level of operation. And lastly, as I noted, in relation to all these adjustments, if you want to look at the data, they remember we calibrated at the very beginning, mm -hmm. all you've got to do is just go into this fan information, and then you can see all the fan data. So it's all brought down to you in terms of here's the actual percentage, here's the fan speed going all the way down from its maximum down to the minimum, and you could also then change it and look at it in fan curve plotting. So you can see actually how it scales out. So overall, this gives you a little bit of a perspective in terms of what we're doing with Fan Expert 2 and really taking it to the next level in terms of functionality and versatility for fan controls on a motherboard. And that's going to wrap it up for this video, guys. Uh, once again, this has been the Fan Expert 2 software implemented with the Z77 line of motherboards from ASUS. Uh, this has been JJ with uh, ASUS. And thanks again, JJ, for stopping by and sharing this information with us. Thank you for having me. Uh, thank you all for watching. Uh, if you'd like to see more tech videos, please head over to our Newegg YouTube channel. And uh, you can also check out the ASUS ROG YouTube channel if you want to see more of, a uh, more of JJ and his friends. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you next time on Newegg TV.